savory dish has to be the national dish. Am I just feeding you again? Yep, yep, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. So they've invited us in. We can see you, come on. And then you do the little thing, yep. Go, go, go. I've never tried this before. How are you guys doing? Welcome back to Cairo. Before we start our on the goes trip, we have a day in Cairo. And we thought what we'd do is go on a bit of a food tour to show you everything you can eat and what you should eat and how you should eat it when you're in Egypt. I'm so excited. I've heard such good things about the food here in Egypt. So we're actually going to do a food tour with a company called Bellies on Route. And I cannot wait. We're about to head to our first restaurant with them. But oh, are you excited for the food? Wait, so you say we're not putting it on a meal, we're drinking we're not pulling it, yeah. So you're drinking yeah. salad dressing, yes. Yeah. Oh, wow. So what's the Egyptian version of Opa then? <laughs> oh, we say it's a head dog. It's a head dog. Okay, it's a head dog. It's a head dog. It's so spicy. <laughs> I think I had like a really big, it's very punchy. Wow. It's called Mayat Sarata, which translates to salad water. Okay, so we're starting it off with some Mayat Salada. Did I do that? Yes, I got an approval. You could say like a palate cleanser to get you ready for food. So it's just meant to get saliva ready so you eat more food. So this is very local. So I'm going to describe this visually. It's water with a bit of lettuce pretty much. But I've been warned that this is very spicy. So, And I saw your reaction before. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> it like starts and then keeps going down. Whew, I'm ready for some food. <laughs> Trying to cross the road. Oh, okay. Oh, they all stopped. Oh. <laughs> nice. <laughs> they're always happy. Yeah. <laughs> if you guys haven't noticed, the driving in Cairo is crazy. guys we are trying prickly pear which is actually fruit grown on a cactus i've never tried this before and we've noticed that some are yellow and some are red so i'm going to try the red one supposedly they don't change the taste depending on the color mm. it reminds me of kind of like a bland kiwi fruit okay like a kiwi fruit texture but yes. without the sour okay yum yeah it's I just really got it, refreshing got it from this dude i don't know how the different color is he That's just grabs good. them and starts cutting them up yeah. and as you can see we've got like a whole bag of different colors in here grab a different color yeah all right i've yeah. gone for like an orange yellow color <laughs> oh you did describe that pretty good yeah see it's like a kiwi fruit texture like it's quite hot now but if it was middle of the day this would be really refreshing mm. Mm. Good. nice little stopover so our next stop is a place called Felfela, and it's a very famous spot here and this restaurant is actually built within the alleyway. So between the two buildings, they built a restaurant and it goes down the entire alleyway since the 60s. Yeah, look at this. That's building one, that's building two. And this is almost like a facade, this entry. Wow, this place just opens up. Man, this place has such cool decor. And knowing that it's just an alleyway just adds to it. Special. We have some Turkish coffee. We've gone for a little bit of sugar with our coffee. Usually we don't have sugar, but you know what? We're on holiday. We're going for some sugar. <laughs> oh, that's really refreshing. Have we had Turkish coffee before? No, I don't think we have. It's more like a giant shop of coffee would be the closest to show to, but wow, that's going to keep me up tonight. <laughs> Ah, thank you. So we're going to be trying Sholaba Atz. It's <laughs> lentil soup. It's made with the yellow lentils and they said we need to squeeze a little bit of lime in there first. Ah, so it's a mixture of vegetables with the lentils. Mm. It's funny because you know you say you're always like adding spices to things. But this is like bland. Like really? they, Yeah. Does it feel bland? Yeah. Wow. Okay. No? I don't it know. It tastes like yeah, like a very thick vegetable soup. 
But I was expecting it to have more like spices in it. Mm. Like the lime does work, but it's a yeah, really mm -hmm. thick vegetable soup. <laughs> Oh, wow, what have we been presented? All right. All right, so here in Egypt, most people like to eat with their hands, especially using bread. So we've been told you peel a little bit off and then you need to make it into a cat's ear. So you have to fold it and then it looks like a little cat's ear. And I'm going to try it with the baba ganoush, which is an eggplant dish. And we have tried this before and I love baba ganoush. Or baba ganook, yeah. Baba ganook. Mmm. So I love baba ganoush. <laughs> it's like one of my favorite things. Yum. So now you guys know how to eat the dips and the different dishes because wherever you go, there is going to be a lot of bread for starters and a lot of tasty different dishes to have. So of course with a lot of Middle Eastern food, you're going to have falafels. But back home, we have it with chickpeas. So that would be if you just went down to the local kebab shop, they'd just make a chickpea falafel. But here it's made with fava beans and we've actually taken it to the next level. So we have three different dishes made with fava beans. Of course, the first one is your falafel. And then this one here is full. So this is another dish made with the fava beans. And then finally, I mean, it looks like a, a dip, but this is actually a dish. This dish here is called basara. Yes? <laughs> Working on our Arabic. So I just want to first of all show you just the inside of that. That's what it looks like inside. Mm. Does it taste different than the chickpea? Yeah, it does taste different to the chickpea. It's more crunchier. I don't know if this is the way it's prepared or is this is because of the fava beans. I think it's because of the fava beans, but that's super nice. We're used to our chickpeas being like quite packed together, but this crispy, I think I prefer this way. <laughs> so with the full, which is another one of these dishes with the fava beans, we have some spices in there. We also have some, some tahini in there as well. Mmm. Kind of reminds me of Mexican because it's like the beans, like something you would have maybe in a burrito. <laughs> okay. But it's really, really yummy. I want to try it now with the bread. So I'm trying it with the traditional Egyptian bread. I think this is my favorite dish I've tried so far. Wow. Yeah. I really like the beans. Got it. Hey. Mm. That is so good. But like, this is like a really creamy bean dish. Very, very yummy. And then this one looks so different. So this one's been cooked for hours and hours, where this one's only blanche. Blanche. And I do love fried onions. Mmm. Wow, that dish is like really fresh. And this one's cold, where this one was like warm. To me, that tastes more of a dip, where this is like a hearty meal. Like you'd want to have this with like maybe the baba ganoush and maybe tahina, and have that with your bread, where this like, I feel like this could just be my meal. Is that normal? Yes. Like, yeah? yeah. Okay, that's, that what it, it, that's what it feels like. It's so cool that one ingredient can make so many different dishes, but if yeah. someone was to pick out of these different fava beans, which one would you recommend? Oh, this one's good too. <laughs> Probably because it's deep fried. This in this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is yummy. So this dish here is Wittgen Madley, which is pretty much fried eggplant. Oh. Oh. Man, I love eggplant. I'm so <laughs> glad that Egypt loves eggplant as well. Mmm. Mmm. So it almost tastes like there's a bit of a salsa, the sauce that's on here. It's like a garlic, there's a bit of a tomato on there, and there's also some pepper. So it does kind of sit with you, but it's nice. It really gives like a well-rounded flavor to this, rather than just being eggplant. Super tasty. I think this is my favorite dish, Jess, mm -hmm. that we've had so far. owned cafe it has been running since 1925 and we're going to be trying Arabic or well, Arabic coffee we haven't tried Arabic coffee before I'm very excited I've heard that they put cardamom in their coffee and that's what makes it a little bit different and the store literally just smells like coffee and cardamom like it hits you in the face when you walk in all right you're gonna see how it, it gets made this is super cool it's invited us in so I think this is the machine they use to roast the beans I'm guessing they must pour it up there and then it comes through wow it smells so it good smells in here. amazing in here. It smells like spices and coffee. So this is Arabian coffee. It looks so different to the Turkish coffee. This one is way lighter and looks more of like a yellow color. Like I almost would think this is a tea, not a coffee. Cheers. It's very hot. All right, cheers. Okay, it smells like spices. It smells like Christmas. It's probably the cardamom. Mm. 
That tastes like a tea. It doesn't taste like a coffee. Yeah, it tastes like a tea. Wow. That does not taste like coffee. It tastes like a very nice, like, spicy tea. Wow. If I hadn't gone into this guy's shop and seen him grind the beans, I would have thought this was tea. Alrighty, here's our two juices. So this is hibiscus. This one is called Sobia. So which one do you want to try? Let's do hibiscus. Okay, hibiscus first. Wait, let's come sit down. So we've got little seats right on the right on the road. And I think juice bars are very popular here in Egypt, especially during the summertime when it's really hot. You're just walking down the street, grab yourself a juice. So first off is hibiscus, which I know is a flower, and I'm guessing they must add sugar to it. Sweet. Ooh, it's, it tastes a bit like cranberry juice. Oh, it's like a really sweet, got that like tangy berry taste. It's really yummy. And then this one is completely different. So this one's white. Like, let's have a little look. Look, it's like oh. milk. And it's made with um, coconut and vanilla. Oh wow, that's sweet. Oh Steve, this is yummy. Yeah? Mm. It's literally that coconut and vanilla flavored milk. That's what it, oh this is yum. Okay. It's very sweet. We do know Egyptians like love sweet stuff. And then the hibiscus. That almost tastes... <laughs> Any South Africans out there, it reminds me a little bit of milk tart, don't you oh, think? Oh yeah, milk tart. Yeah. Hibiscus, hibiscus is totally different, ready? Yeah. It's like berries. Very strong berries. Yeah. It's wow. Like, you know what? It's like Ribena. And if yes. you want to see this one, it's like very bright coloured. very popular they call it to and it's all uh, nuts and seeds and when you translate the word it means to entertain so this is kind of like their snack food when they're watching a movie yeah so Netflix and chill you'd be getting your <laughs> supplies from this place sunflower seeds you need to peel them <laughs> I love that you do need to peel them. <laughs> um, so let's try that again. Exactly. Sunflower seeds. It's like a nut inside. I can't believe I did that. That's so funny. Oh wow. Ah. It's hot. Yes. It smells good. Wow. Oh, there's peanuts in there. Yeah. Thank you, so Stephen. Stephen Atman. So with Egypt, a lot of people seem to think straight away the monuments and the pyramids, which we understand why you would think that. But we've already just had so many local Egyptian dishes, which some people might think, oh, Egypt, it's Middle Eastern food, but they have their take on each of these dishes, and it's so nice to start our tour by having all these different flavors. Like, honestly, when I first came here, I thought, oh, yeah, I'll just have falafel. Middle Eastern food, already we've had so many different dishes. So when you think of Egypt, guys, think of the food, because it's a melting pot here. But there are also different sizes, so this is considered a big size. We are doing street food, but with a home feel, like a home cooked feel. So what we've got here is bamya, which is a dish with veggies that you kind of throw into a pot with some tomato based sauce. So this would be like lazy food, our kind of cheese tomato toasty back home. This would be the Egyptian version of that. So our main veggie dish in here would be okra. And we've got some rice with it. This reminds me of mom's home cooked stew that she would cook all day. The flavors would be with it. This reminds me of home. So this is a good, good stop on the trip. The okra is cooked so yummy. Mm -hmm. That's delicious. Yeah, it's like a very tomato-y kind of stew kind of taste. It's really good with the bread. This bread, that is like some of the best traditional bread we've had so far. Oh man, we're walking past us. Like, something smells so sweet. Local street side bakery. All right, we just grabbed something from the bakery. We got a traditional biscuit called Biscuit Yansun. Is that right? Biscuit Yansun. Biscuit Yansun. And it is made from star anise. I so don't even she's... know what star anise is. I'm not sure if you like star anise. Ready? Oh, okay. Mm. Let there be light. That'd be good dipping in tea. It tastes like 
rust, but not so as hard as rust, way softer. It's so yummy, that would have been so good dipping in your tea. It's like a hard biscuit, not too crazy flavoursome, really, really tasty. <laughs> It's so cool that we're pretty much just walking around central downtown Cairo at the moment, but we need to go to our next spot, which is getting to dessert. So we need to jump in the cab. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so what's the next area we're going to? Is it still downtown Cairo? It is still downtown. It is a certain area called Elfi or Tofeya. Okay. come out to the end of downtown and this is where there are so many shops this is where you can get your kind of cheap clothing if you wanted a shirt for $2.50 and there's a lot of restaurants here as well super nice you got all of these different outdoor seating areas people are having some food some shisha has a totally different vibe out here all right guys our last savory dish has to be the national dish we are trying koshery oh, and the store that we're trying it from actually in the 1950s a guy was selling it in his street cart and it got so popular he started his own restaurant and now there's five of them this is now the third place we've been to and they just want to invite us in so they've invited us in the egyptians are so friendly it's so cool all right steven's going back into the kitchen i'm gonna make our dinner <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I just put one of it. Uh, which which direction? Was now that one is. Yeah, you show it then I'll. Macarona, Torad, Masale, Yeah, Macarona. Easy. Okay. Off you go. Sorry. Quick as you, come on. And then you did a little thing. Yep. Go go go. You do it. Yep. Hey, I'm in Tamtala. I don't know if it's that's the only half of it. Oh wow, okay, he does fill it up. Oh, it's so hard to keep up with him. Oh wow, okay. I'll leave it to the expert. That wasn't planned at all. They just invited us in. That was so cool. <laughs> Alrighty guys, we've got the dish here. It is made of, are you ready? It's carbs on carbs on carbs. It's carbs on carbs. So it's pasta, rice, lentils, chickpeas, onions, grilled, tomato and then it's rice and vermicelli noodles and then garlic vinegar garlic vinegar on top wow that smells strong and then what you need to do is mix it all together all right, i was told you have to really make sure you mix it in well so i'm getting in there it's like so much stuff in one so good oh yeah that is really yummy the garlic it's like so garlicky the onions are nice and crispy and then the rice and the pasta just go well so well together it's like yeah, it's like you put all your leftovers it's like you put all your leftovers from the night before into a cup and reheated it and there's your meal mm. okay guys i've eaten i've made my food i'm getting full we're stopping off for dessert always the best part so we've come for dessert to a very traditional place to get a couple of different sweets but i love how it's so traditional like they have the proper oriental bowls and it's all like really nice except they've given it to us on um tom and jerry plates very traditional yes. place. what are you talking about <laughs> all right so i think i'm going to first try i'm going to call it the middle middle eastern churro this one <laughs> looks like a pickle Middle Eastern churros? Very sticky, <laughs> very sugary. It, yeah, it tastes like a churro that has really been soaking in syrup for years. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Wow, you literally only need like one bite and you're done with the desserts. These are crazy, but I need to try the rest. Kanafa. I'm pretty sure we tried this in Jordan, but we had it with cheese in the middle. Okay. Ooh, it's warm. That's really yummy. Oh, you'll like that one. Am I just feeding you again? Yep, yep, yeah. <laughs> oh, very warm. Yeah. Oh. It's like a warm cream and then like really crunchy on the outside. Mm. And again, very, very sweet. Oh, wow. 
What are you calling that? The Middle Eastern Malteser? What's your name for that one? <laughs> it's literally just dripping in syrup. Try this. So that is the uh, theme for dessert here in Egypt. It's sugar syrup. Just you anything wait. dipped in sugar syrup. syrup. Kind of like a really hard donut ball with a lot of sugar. Mm. All right, the last one. I cannot believe we're getting through this. And the last one, Vesbusa. 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 Oh, Ves, Vesbusa. I'm guessing it's going to be sweet again. Mmm. <laughs> this one's more like a cake. Okay. But still very, very syrupy. I think this one's my favorite. The cakey one. Wow. Sugar coma. Oh my gosh, I'm like buzzing right now. So much. It was lovely to meet you. So much fun. Thank you. Thanks guys, have a good night. Bye. Guys, that food tour was amazing. I highly recommend whenever you come to a new country, go on a food tour. I feel like it's like a really good way to like experience a little bit more of the culture and trying foods that you never would have tried before. Yeah. But the Egypt series is literally just beginning. We've got so much fun content coming towards you guys. So make sure if you aren't subscribed, hit subscribe so you never miss an episode and give this video a thumbs up if there was a dish that you really want to try. But thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on the next episode in Egypt. See you guys. <laughs> we made it. Yeah. I can't believe we're going inside a pyramid steam. I didn't realize you could go inside. This is terrifying. Oh my God, I'm really hot. This is too much. <laughs>